not 15. Fifteen. Doing exactly what he said, Barbara, straight at Donna Vekic. And is that an area that they can exploit Vekic's volleys? Yeah, I think if I would play against uh, mixed doubles against Donna Vekic, every single ball when she's standing at the net has to go at her pretty much. Surprise her. Incredible career he's had, and he still has. Even Dordic, number two in the world. He said he's really enjoying his uh, tennis now. He used to be too, I don't know, sometimes getting upset when he would lose and too tight. And now he's really enjoying his time on the tour towards the end of his career. But he's playing like that. If you're ranked number two, you might as well keep on going. Good movement from Wesley Kulov there, doing exactly yes. what the player at the net in that situation should Same cover points. the middle. Give the width up, but cover the middle. Don't allow them the easy shot to go to. Watch Kulov here. Can't get that one. Donna goes down the middle. Nicely done. It's a little static after that particular volley herself. Here's a deciding point. Done very well there, though. That was not easy game. coming in at the right hit. A couple of times uh, she's had good reflexes okay. in this game. Donna Vekic, she probably knows that uh, she's going to be the target at the net. Should we bring the man in who really understands <laughs> mixed doubles? I'm my break, not sad, I'm on. Oh, Josh is. He's Josh is uh, you didn't know that. Josh is listening courtside. If oh. only I'd known, I wouldn't have said so many nice things about you, Josh. I've learned so much in the last five minutes listening to you two gurus up there. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> solid start from Team Croatia. But I cannot believe Donna Bekic has only played 51 doubles matches on tour. She's 27 years of age, and I can only wonder if that would have helped her singles if she's played a little more doubles. However, time will tell, and. It's a good, strong start for Croatia to get out of a difficult matchup. I have to say, Netherlands would be favourites in this one, just given their mixed doubles and doubles now. Although, you know, when you've got a lot to play for for both teams, this tie is yet to be decided. So I think there'll be a few twists in the tail. So stay tuned. Thanks, Wesley Kulov representing Team Netherlands. Just cool off.
15. Doing what he does very well. He's got a very efficient service motion. And that's not easy to do. Did you see the, cre the angle he created? He was pretty much standing very close to the T and not to the T, to the middle. And I really enjoy it when they play I-formation. That's oh. brilliant. Yeah, he has a good understanding, doesn't he? When to play what. She was doing a very nice job with that volley. Dodic absolutely crushed it. A little bit too much on that forehand, Kulhoff. But I think the game plan is pretty clear. They're trying to be super aggressive. So he won the French Open mixed doubles title in 2022 with uh, Shibahara. That is some lovely shape on that particular forehand. Great depth. Thought it couldn't organize his feet quickly enough. Oof. And he's got okay. some decent movement Team off the wicket there game. as well. Josh, what's about the serve that is so good from Kulov? What a, how does he get so much easy pace? I was just uh, wondering, Josh, on the technicals for Wesley, how he, uh, how he manages to get as much pace and movement when it seems such an efficient action. Well, I think, he, you know, you can look at the, the, the action, it, there's not a lot of tension in the, mo in the motion. It's nice and smooth. He's got really good leg drive. And I think he, you know, he, he can really create Love a lot 15. of pace and spin by that back leg coming up. He really drives up into the serve. And you know, he's a quality player. And sometimes when I watch Wesley, I, I wonder what happened when he was trying to play singles. Because sometimes when you watch the double specialists, they lack a bit of skill or athletic ability. He seems to have quite a lot of it. Probably size or height may may have hurt him a little bit in trying to play singles these days, just given how physical it is and, and how tall and dominant they are with the serve. But certainly very capable, Wesley, in pretty much every facet of the game. So Donna just uh, kind of stretching her legs out after the opening point of this particular game. Of course, she's just come off court, and it's a pretty swift turnaround after that three set singles win. move from uh, Schuess, trying to come in after that return right away. Doesn't want to get involved in too many ground strokes, rally, ground stroke rallies. Oh. 
keeps Petey going for 13, it, isn't he? 14. Incredible. And even if he misses that one, it makes the opponents think all the time. You've got to be on your toes. Got to be ready nice. and aware. Yeah, Donny did a nice job of catching his eye a little bit with a bit of a fake move. Yes. Starting point. And if you're jumping in and watching the United Cup for the first time, it is always gender to gender when it gets to the deciding point. Not entirely sure that that should be the case, to be honest. But it is the rule for now. What's up? to a deciding point, but too flat on the forehand from Vekic, finds the net, and Team Netherlands find themselves with the first break in this vital mix, 2-1. Yeah, it seems like three out of the four players are trying to come to the net as uh, quickly as possible, and Dona Vekic is the only one who is just more comfortable on the baseline. Well, good start for Team Netherlands, and uh, well, it's been a good start to the new year as well. We're not going to show you the fireworks, but we will show you the Sydney Harbour as it looks in the day. 150 miles of shoreline, it uh, can walk around Sydney Opera House as ever, the iconic Opera House alongside the Harbour Bridge. And a kilometre and a bit across there on that uh, wonderful structure in this beautiful city on the water. position in here, low, keen, cover in the middle. Vekic doesn't have those high spin rates that can access the short part of the court and uh, well Team Netherlands done their homework and they've done the business so far. Time. Yeah and it puts so much pressure on you as well when you have these two standing at the net and you're on the baseline. I mean I when I used to play I was also preferring to stay on the baseline but uh, it's not a great feeling when you have two double specialists at the net. Don't find any gaps. Just the odd blob. <laughs> oh. tough for Kulov to defend that second serve and make the move and time his move at the right time when it's coming in 122 Ks. Shows is going to need to put in a nice high percentage of first serves. Second serve, that's for sure. Weaker side for Donna, would you say, off return? Which side? I think the uh, oh. airport. She's been returning quite well today, though.
Lovely. Stepped into the court, took it early. Donna Vekic. Interesting to see the court position from Shores when she hits that first shot way behind the baseline. She's already a little bit scared. Can't be serving that one as wide as she is there because, I mean, Kulov has to cover the line. Game to Croatia. And the break is easily retrieved. Two games all. It's probably going to come down on the, the girls' serve. Who's going to hold it first? I'm a donchi body spremna. I kind of feel for Scherz there. If she's going to serve, she needs to serve through the middle, particularly to Donna on that backhand side to bring Wesley into play. So just to geometrically stop the angles. If she's yep. going to serve it slow and wide, I mean, he's, he's going to have to take a huge risk to, go, to cover the cross-court return. He's going to have to go so early. Yeah, she just doesn't have the pace on the serve to go out wide, right? Looks like Demi Shoes doesn't mind uh, trying those lobs <laughs> I was referring to before. Every now and then. Brilliant from Vekic. You think it was uh, smart for Shoes to take that overhead, or you think he would have let it go? 13, 15. Let's have another look at it. Was Kolhoff was there? Yeah. Bravo, Don. She body is ready. I'm bravo. This could be a problem for Shuas in this match. The opponents. Using just brute force there, though, was he? He was uh, floated that one in nicely, got the ball up high to Shuas. He's going to have to stand deep because of the potential pace, and he can utilize the bounce as well. Just a natural volleyer would have used their backhand to try and save themselves in this kind of position. I know it's not easy, but that's coming there, and Donna's gone to her forehand. But a natural volleyer would have dropped the racket head down there and tried to just hit it with, as a backhand shot. With a little pirouette. Did you see that? <laughs> Did a <it> turn? <laughs>
good instinctive creative play games in Croatia years of experience in that little drop shot from no. Dodic and it team is 3-2 to team Croatia great stuff come on come on Borna ja mislim da Dona na prvi ovome stane malo iza each other for a long time, Borna and Donna. They both actually uh, trained for a while in North London in the UK and uh, kind of have grown up together. Not at each other's respective careers, which have been hugely successful. Yes. And the other thing you got to remember as well is that uh, for certainly for someone like Borna who wants more matches here, this is this is big for him uh, ahead of Melbourne. Oh, certainly. I just feel for Borna because uh, throughout his career he's had uh, to deal with so many injuries. Silver medalist in Tokyo wants to Time. follow Croatians, Mechus and Pavic. And uh, final set match tiebreaker there, 10-6 against those two. As it will be Mechic, who's uh, playing with Wesley Kulov in his last year on tour next year. Some of his best success and is one of his best friends on the tour is Mekcic and Kulov. They made the semis of the French Open in 2020. Also the final of the US Open. And they won the ATP finals that particular year. The only reason those two actually split up was because of the Olympics. Coverage there from Wesley Kohlhoff. I was really 15. ready. That ball clipped the tape from Dona Vekic. He was very aware, very alert. On the next changeover. Donna, is that's what you're asking, yeah? You're asking for the physio or what? No. <laughs> oh, no. Not for this, no, no, no. Donna thought that maybe the ball touched Schur's racket off the net cord. And John Long wanted to call the physio. <laughs> Interesting. <laughs> oh. Thirty. She definitely prefers the swinging volley. Donna Vekic. This is, uh, this is what happened. She was just wondering whether this just got a little bit of the frame, but no, missed it by a long way. Thirty. 
Messi, 40. Team Netherlands in trouble. And sometimes when you play mixed doubles, the guy wants to do a little bit too much. I've seen it so many times. Tendency to go to Dodic's forehand in these moments when you watch him in men's doubles, but of course that does allow him just to rip one right through the middle at Schur's. It'll be interesting to see where Kulov goes. Yeah, he went there. Oh, and he went back with absolute excellence. Just the starting point. Bullet of a second serve and accurate. Yeah, couldn't be better placed. Easy for sure to put that away. 174Ks glued onto the line. Brilliant. Excellent mixed doubles. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but I'm, I'm still Team surprised that Kulov went uh, to Dodik with that forehand. When you Bring go, go. There you go. He's more scared of Donovekic's ground strokes than Dodik's. <laughs> it worked. That's what matters. Got some serious depth on that forehand, didn't he, Kulov? Yep. A lot of firepower. Too quick for our own good. And it was uh, the right thought, but the execution was not ideal. Isn't it the best feeling when you want to cross or when you're crossing and you know, okay, I got this now. The ball is coming right onto your racket. When you catch that right moment of moving. Of not having a lot of spin on your shots is that Vekic has got to try and skim the tape at pace. And when she doesn't get it quite right, it's a pretty easy put away for both Kulov and Schurz out here. First serves of absolute paramount importance here for Vekic. She's got one. Josh, if you were in Dodic's shoes right now, where would you serve to cool off if you were uh, telling Vekic? Well, I, I think just down the tee, to, to the backhand, try and don't give him any angle whatsoever. And then if you're Dodic, try and close that net down. Well, I, think, I think this is going to come down to, for, for both of the female players, who can hold serve. And, Particularly Demi Schurz, they have to strategize very well when she's serving. And I think you guys alluded to the fact that maybe a lot of eye formation and just serving down the tee because just her lack of pace on serve will be making it pretty tough for, for Team Netherlands to hold. That was a lovely yeah. blend of serves. Real off pace one to cool off on the previous point. He actually swung very early and mistimed it. Then she went back to her normal pace to Schurz, 
and they tidy things up very nicely. 4-3, Team Croatia. And that sets them up very nicely for an assault on Schurz's service game next time around. New balls will be in play, there'll be a little bit more pace through the court. Yeah, and I wonder if Kolhoff uh, is going to be a little bit more active at the net, trying to play I-formation, something different. But uh, they put themselves into a pretty good position, Team Croatia. Vekic holding the serve this time. Got broken last time. That's so all the pressure on Demi. Even my only 97 French Open champion, and uh, she is certainly getting involved with both players. She's so passionate about yeah. the sport, uh, so I'm passionate about play. tennis. I'm a youth pitch, it's Juve Van. Time. Knows Donna Vekic, Donna Juric, even Dorik as well, really well. Great team spirit, they're all friends. Big test for Team Netherlands. Fifteen. When you play I-formation as a returner, you just... Oh, you got to pick your spot. Gotta be certain. Oh, right on the chest. Yeah, it wasn't on purpose, but Demi Shaw is getting a little bit of help here because the balls are uh, brand spanking new, so they're going to go a little quicker, but this is such a huge game. Team Croatia, they'll be, they know they have to win to try and go through, but even one set, they're a chance. So this next five minutes or so is huge here for Team Croatia. And that return there, I feel Donna has to just lace that straight down the line. She's, she's got a great forehand down the line. We see that in, in a singles match. Yeah, I feel like she's always keeping an eye on, on Wesley at the net. You just have to rip it, right? He's a good-looking rooster, though, isn't he? <laughs> well, he just got engaged to Julia Gerges, I heard. So that makes him an unavailable rooster. Yep, but still a good-looking one. Not as good-looking as you, Patch, and Josh down there, of course. Uh, you lie so smoothly. I just blushed. Oh. <laughs> make things a little more tricky than they would like. Game. Makes amends for the previous miss. Closes the net down. Very good serving, though, from Demi Schurz. Made a ton of first serves, and that's the key for her when she plays well, not just in mixed doubles, but, of course, in, on the, the WTA Tour. Great use of new balls, and I think they just strategized a lot better on that service game, so that's a huge hold in the context of this match. <coughs> Oh. 
What a point. Thought he had to cover three quarter of the Love floor or even team. more. Yeah, what a great athlete he is, but not quick enough. Unbelievable first point. And smart play from Kulhoff with that lob. Yeah, they ended up being both on the same side. That's a no-go. Doubles are mixed. Oh, it's finally dropped out. Donna looked as though she was trying to volley a grenade at times there. 15. I think the tension is rising. It's going up, that's for sure. I mean, Dodic has done so well there. He's a good athlete, athlete isn't he? What a oh, pick up. She was ready this time. Donna Vekic. Double handed volley. 30, 15. So much pace there from Kolov. He's very, very consistent out there. Great intensity. Is looking to try and keep that low and Recently at the feet of Vekic and Dodic unable to come up with the goods. 5-4, opening set. Chat. That's his time around and the Croatian bench, 5-4, business end of the set. Almost looks as though they're just letting the two players marinate yeah. in their own thoughts. Yeah, they really are. To, uh, you can see them. You can see, I, we've seen it through when Donna has played a few times when the crowd gets too animated or the, her team zone gets too animated. She tells them to, to quiet down. I think that's exactly what's happened. But it's pretty, uh, a fair bit of tension down here courtside. Plenty to play for. Ai, 
samo ga breknu si ekipa. Ajmo. Ajmo ljubica. Iva encouraging her team. Come on, time for a break now. Time. Room for error for Wesley Kuloff as he steps up to serve to try and get his team back on level terms. Fifteen. There was not much of a reaction there from Onovekic. It looked like a kick serve from Kolov. Interesting. Oh. Did you see that kick? How that bounced? Incredible. Thirty love. Completely out of reach. Now oh, that's a kick serve. You gotta take it either really, really early, you would have had to step in even more or go way back. But you don't know that before, that's the problem. Great vari variety in that. Forty line. So accurate, and he's not losing any pace through the bounce. I know it's not the quickest of serves that he's hitting in with these three quarter kickers, but you can see it as it accelerates through the court and up, it's still rising. And that's the hardest return for a woman that kicks her from a man. really hard for Donna Vekic, you know, when she doesn't constantly hit the ball. Sometimes she's too flat-footed as well, when suddenly the ball goes to her. She moves too late, and too slow in doubles. It's so important to always be on your toes, be active, be ready. Never be flat-footed. Wesley was hanging around in the middle of the court in case Donna took it line just to try and get in behind Schurz. But it was swept into the open space. You can see him going and perhaps thought Schurz was actually going to go. He probably wouldn't have done that in men's doubles, huh? Good feel. From Schurz. And that's what I mean. It's uh, really. It's tricky for the guy a lot of times just to also believe in the, the woman on the court that they are capable. She's a doubles player. Didn't just go once, but twice. Well played from Schurz. And look at that, moving in the right moment. A little fake first. And that's the one when you know, okay, she has experience. Serve that from Donna into that left hip. It's not easy to redirect down the line, and it's tough to find the good width on the cross court one as well. She had to be worried about what Dodic was going to do. Brilliant from Kulov. 
Tētsī Kuši. Skillful. <laughs> Big reach there from Dodik. Gonna make it. play a lot of doubles, Donna Vekic, but boy, is she a classy tennis player and didn't panic here. Unbelievable execution, but still needs a really impressive strong first serve right here. Get themselves out of trouble. Is it going to be the left hip again? It's going straight down the tee. Okay. Josh called it. Damn. That's exactly where she went. Cut down the angles, and Dodic does the rest of the hard work. 6 5, opening set. Bravo, Maestore. Bravo. lobby, koi volet, For somebody that doesn't have naturally high spin rates, that was an unbelievable lob that she had because she got so much racket head acceleration in a, such a pressurized moment to be able to get the spin she needed. Well, I think that j just shows that the class of Donna Vekic. Uh, I still think there's a lot of room for improvement in her game. I think particularly on serve and adding a, a little bit more variation and also angles to her game. She's, she can get a lot better, but uh, I just like that self-belief in the big moments from these top singles players when they're playing doubles or mixed. So. That was massive, and a bit of a free swing now they'll have on return. What's the discussion going on here? What, what do you think about the lob here? Um, Wesley, like <laughs> all men's play. doubles players, camping on the net. That's how they play. There's so much power in men's doubles. If you're not right on top of the net, right. reacting and hoping it's going to go over, you know, a lot of the time, it, you know, you, you get yourself in trouble. Like this way, Wesley's still camping on the net, even with sure serving at the pace that she is. Yeah, I mean, he has to. It worked well uh, yeah. in the last uh, service game. But uh, remember, she served with new balls, so the ball was traveling through the air a little bit quicker. He definitely needs to get them involved at the net. Shoes needs a, a high first serve percentage, but I'm expecting big returns here. Oh! Did she get him? Definitely got him. That is it's a glancing blow. That's what Eva Maioli told Donna Vekic to go for the returns. Just smack it as hard as you can. He's fine. And there's a replay. Oh, that would have hurt. Must have had a few softer partners that you played with if you thought that was going to hurt. <laughs> Fifteen. John Blum just having a good eagle eye there to make sure that Wesley allowed that ball to just cross over the net before striking it. She's not happy with that, of course, she has to make that return. But uh, once again, it's because of uh, Wesley Kohlhoff at the net. That's why she's hesitating a little bit. 
in singles, she would have, she can close her eyes and she would put that into the court. Different ball game in doubles and mixed. Well played from Doric though, just to go for it. Locally known as the buffet ball. Oh yeah. Help yourself. <laughs> just wondered why that was why I kind of suggested at the start whether it's just a little chip lob down the line there, because Wesley's making himself a nuisance, he's all over the net. Well, that has to come from Dodik, I think. I'm not sure if uh, Donna Vekic ever played a chip down the line. Oh, got him again. So this is the yes. point here, guys. And so if I was Dodik, I would stand back. Because that would stop Wesley Kulhoff from crossing as much. If I was Donna Vekic, I'd crank this straight down the line. That's why you've been in the mixed doubles final, Josh, of the Australian Open. <laughs> you just told me what to do. He still does. I let him think that. Oh! <laughs> Incredible point. And the Netherlands six games all tiebreak. And he was absolutely right, Josh. He should have gone down the line. Well, it was great. Stretch, there's no doubt about it. Unbelievable pickup from from Wes. But again, if if Dodic is deeper, and maybe on the baseline, he, he, yep. he can't cross. And of course, I think Donish has just got to back that forehand and go down the line. So really getting down to the business end of this set, it's anyone's. It again. One zero. Team never nice pickpocket of a point from Schurz. Watch Schurz retreat, defend, and then seize the opportunity. She's pretty happy with herself, too. Once again, that makes Team Croatia really think where to return, what to do. It's kind of feeling them a little bit restricted. him this tie break big difference if it's 2-1 or 3 love basically let Vekic and Dodik back into this tie break Go, go, go. 
Dal Seresu, idemo, daj se, daj se ovaj Seresu, ajmo, idemo. to go down the line, Team Netherlands, but both times into the net. And in the mixed doubles, the momentum can change so quickly. It's incredible. Two love up, no, two, three. But it's found a little bit of magic on that oh, return. Not only did it have the right amount of width to it so that Kulov couldn't get involved, but it was another net skimmer. Got to hand it to the Croatian fans half an hour away from midnight. And they are still in full voice. Good energy throughout the course of the three matches this evening. And some very tie defining moments coming up. And she's missed it. Just long. But it was the right thing to do. And, you know, even though that went long, it's going to make uh, Team Netherlands think, that's for sure. Yeah, it was, a, it was a right shot, just unfortunately, just overcooking it. But it was interesting that Dodic did stay back. And, of course, that just stops Wesley Kulhoff from crossing it you know, quite as vigorously as he, as he has been. So, tactically, great awareness from Team Croatia. Second ace of the set. How oh, we'd love to have a third. It was unreturned. It's as good as an ace. Team Netherlands do to try and counter the potential threat on the return. They're going with the eye formation. More often than not, that means he's going to swing one into that forehand side of Dodic. Will he gamble and go that way? Try to outthink him. Set of tennis. Team Croatia. An absolute jubilation Six, for the Croatian Six. fans and Team Croatia as they take it on the breaker. Yeah, smart play from uh, Team Croatia. Uh, it was really noticeable in that tie break here on the returns. They were going down the line every single time. They were down 2 0. And, uh, managed to turn it around. And that was an important uh, set for them to win because that... What does that mean again? Can you repeat that? 
<laughs> Get your calculators out, yeah. guys. <laughs> it's, uh, it, it, well, well, let's just roll through. Let's roll through the credits here first. Let's uh, let, let's go through there. It, well, I mean, there was so little different yeah. Yeah. difference between the two. Yeah, it was just uh, one or two points, of course. And I, 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 I just think the power game of Croatia in the end was just the difference. They just had a little bit more strike when it mattered and a touch of class. But uh, boy. This is anyone's. It was a quality first set from all four players. Uh, all four players came up with some brilliant shot making. As we take a look at some of the highlights here, it was a, it was an awesome set of mixed doubles. So uh, I'm still a little nervous and I'm still a little unsure of what the the permutations are. With Croatia winning that first set, I think they've got to give themselves a good shot now if they can get, bring this tight in the second set with uh, a potential count back on games. came from a breakdown of that opening set to take it and obviously a significant set that they have managed to win. There are permutations tonight in terms of Group F and the one simple one is if Croatia win this match, no matter how, if they lose this next set, if they win it on the match breaker, they are through from Group F. If they were to lose the next uh, couple of sets, uh, then the entire group, including Norway, would be decided on games won and lost. We would Second sets. be getting our calculators out uh, and trying to work out that, and it is exceptionally close, as you can understand. Um, so that is basically where we're at right now. Had they lost by two sets to love, then it would have mean that the Dutch had gone through. So that's uh, meaning that Croatia have at least guaranteed themselves uh, an opportunity of uh, getting through on games one and lost. And the other, other thing that uh, obviously exists in these uh, groups is there is a best runner-up that uh, potentially looks like it will be coming from this group. Yeah, that's what I love about this format. That. Uh, it's uh, a little bit tricky, and uh, pretty much every point counts, every set counts. And still massive motivation for Team Netherlands. Incredibly unlucky. Two brilliant lobs from Vekic. There you have those the lobs we were talking about from Vekic. Very skillful, but uh, not successful. But I mean, she definitely needs to throw them in more often. First game, second serves. Tennis is a game of physics and chance, and uh, well, it's a good fortune going the way of Team Netherlands in that particular game as they get up and running nice and quickly in this second set. And uh, I said it earlier tonight, they're supposed to just change ends at one love, this whole going backwards. Yeah, there's uh, a few changes which could be implemented, and we talked so many times about uh, the spectators as well being able to come in at change events, especially when there's big stadiums in the top rows. There should be able to be some movement. Let's just take a quick look at that table we were uh, chatting about. There we go. We're in uh, Group F. This is what we're looking at. This is where Norway have finished. Uh, one apiece in terms of their ties, uh, match wins three and two. So you can see where Croatia sit right now. So if they were to win this, four and two would uh, take them through as undisputed winners of this particular group. 
But uh, it's going to be tight in terms of games won and lost. And all the players would be very aware of uh, what they have to do. Yeah, you could see Team Croatia when they won that first set. They, whilst they were pumped, they weren't celebrating like they knew that they were through or anything. They sort of were, were tempering the celebrations back towards the team zone. So I'm sure, well, not so sure even mayoli has got the calculator out in terms of games won and lost, but someone must have it. Again, little flat footed there. I love the variety on the serve from uh, Tordic. Once again, it's important for Team Croatia to keep that intensity level, concentration level up now. It's only natural that uh, after winning a tight set that you just have a breather. You need to keep the energy going. Very aggressive service game. From Dodik. <laughs> Getting a workout with his overheads. Have a look at it. Jumped in there. Good to see that they're having a good time as well. Be ready, Donna Vekic needs to expect every single shot straight at her. nearly went out the court and just let Ivan Tony do everything. What's going on Jeez. down there? He's really getting a workout. Dodic suddenly <laughs> making a comeback in singles here. <laughs> he is. Look at that. She just got out of the way. Now they're in trouble on their serve. And Donna Vekic better be ready now at the net. Where's he going, Josh, the surf? Got to go T, surely. Oh. 
that. Game that is a uh, disappointing miss from Vekic. She's made some nice volleys. It isn't her forte. And that bit of frailty there allows Team Netherlands to jump out to a nice start. It was uh, pretty much three volley errors there from uh, Donna Vekic. Or, I mean, the returns went straight at her. And then that one point where she left the court. Just been trying to work out the uh, games if we do get to a situation here where all the sets are equal, which uh, potentially will happen if uh, Team Netherlands win this set and the match tiebreaker. 15 love. Currently, as it stands, Norway have 66 games, uh, 163 loss. Croatia with 57 games, one and 55 loss. And uh, Netherlands sitting at 53 games, one and 58 loss. But if they got through this set, dropping just a, a couple of games, that's going to swing around yep. very nicely for them. 30 love. Finding acres of space. 14. And that is a very, very good hold and a priceless hold to serve to love for Demi Schurz and Wesley Kuloff. And they have raced away with this second set halfway through it already at three love. Yeah, this is how quickly the momentum uh, can change. And we talked about it so many times. They were in a good position, Team Croatia, and then Ivan Eva Dodik for the first time loses his serve. They know they're back in the game for the whole competition. on the left of the picture there in the blonde yeah. hair. Yeah. Yeah. Suddenly there is a big boost, isn't there, in that team. Despair and disappointment of dropping the opening set on the tiebreaker. There is a huge abundance of enthusiasm and optimism in Team Netherlands right now. And they still very much have their future in their hands. Time. Every single game from here on in could have value for Croatia. It's important for Vekic to hold here then. I hope they're aware of that, that every game counts, not just every set. Love you. And the better answers at the moment, don't they? The Dutch team. Very skillful at net. Always trying something new, something different, getting involved. More creative.
Brilliant. This is enchanting tennis from Team Netherlands at the moment. What a sky hook there from Demi Schurz. Yeah, that was a very tricky ball to hit. She really had to stretch up high. Have a look at this one. <laughs> and also not to lose the orientation on the court as well. That's not easy. Very skillful. Fifteen, fourteen. Back edge and dotted in danger of getting overrun here in this second set. More chances coming Team Netherlands way. Big first serve from Vekic. Chance of recovering. First serve percentage is at 58% uh, in this set for Team Croatia. That's not high enough. Ah. Okay, Team Netherlands. Team Netherlands, the four games. It makes it look so smooth, Wesley Kohlhoff. This four-love lead is going to really hurt Team Croatia in their pursuit of games won and lost. There's no doubt about it. Yeah, there's a good chance it's going to be five-love. I don't think Kolov uh, will be dropping his serve here. Hasn't dropped it so far. Fifteen-love. My understanding, really, from here is you would think that. I mean, it's a to guess, but they're going to have to back themselves to win it in a match tiebreak because a double break down here, it's, it's a long way back to win this set. It's a funny game, mixed doubles, isn't it? It's amazing. One point can really turn the tide, and that's what happened on that Dodic serve in that previous service game where he lost serve where he had game point and they played that long rally and that really has turned the tide since then yeah and they're just about to drag themselves to uh, 58 games one 58 loss for the three ties that they're currently uh, being in the mm. two ties, sorry, that they've been involved with, that, that will get them back to the 50% yeah. ratio, which is just a 1% behind where Croatia and Norway are sitting. So this run of five okay. games has been hugely Genius. significant and potentially will be very telling when we get to Team the end of this evening. Five love, Team Netherlands. So basically... Absol absolutely, Mark, even if they lost at 6-4, yeah. one break, that would, prob that would probably be enough to get through. Yeah, because they're just a bit ahead of Norway yeah. at the moment. That's right. Russia were. This is very costly. I just would have thought, you know, after the first set, which uh, was so even that it's one-way traffic now. Yeah, and they now they now need to win the match tiebreaker, Croatia, unless they mount some sort of recovery in this second set. They're going to need because that counts as a set. Yeah. So they need to win, and otherwise they're gonna, otherwise they're going to be gone. They're up, exactly. Yeah, I'm on the 
It could not be closer in Group F. And that's why it's beautiful to have these different types of competition, not just the fact that this is a mixed event, but the difference in terms of the round robin, just the intrigue that that brings to these kind of moments here. There is an awful lot of calculations going on at the moment. And even if you lose a tie, you still have a chance to win the group. I like that. Team love. Well, Dutchman can't find the finishing shot this time. has been a brick wall on the net and then has moved superbly. Like uh, Ivan Dorik doesn't want to let this service game slip away anymore, just like before. Well, they're going to get a look at uh, Demi Schur's serve after this. Absolutely. And if they could get another break and then a hold of uh, Fekic's serve, those three games. Yeah. Potentially, yeah. Josh, with it's the fact that the, the match tiebreaker not only counts for a set on the count back, but it actually counts for another game, game as well. Yeah. Yeah. This, this, this is almost tie defining this game right here. <laughs> in, in many ways, if Croatia can, you're right, if they can break here and then hold Vekic, that'll tidy up their game's won and lost percentage. Wow. Tight. Love 15. We should, of course, amplify the fact that uh, if Croatia lose this set but do win the, uh, the match tiebreaker, they will go through as winners of the group. from Ivan Dodik, but did you see what Donna Vekic was again? She was out of the court once again. She didn't want to come back in once she ran to that uh, drop shot. Have a look. And there she goes out, and she was maybe at some stage trying to get in, but she didn't. <laughs> didn't have to. Great shot. Absolutely vaporized it. He knows exactly what's going on in there, Ivan Dodik. 15, I mean, it's so tight down here, guys. I'm, I'm almost certain that both teams really wouldn't know just how close that game percentage win-loss is. That, 
I mean, how would they know? They're trying to win matches and they're trying to focus. It's it's not easy, but I'm, I'm pretty certain that they're, they're not aware of just how tight this is. Agreed. Uh, Donna was a little slow up to that Thank ball. Has the chance to stay competitive in this second set. Drifted away for Team Croatia. That's what she's thinking, Donna Vekic. Finally at the right time. Then we turn down the line. Early preparation. See many of them in her singles match today against Arancha Rus. Things have just got a little more interesting. The best things happen at midnight. And that's what's happening here in Sydney. It is 5-2 to Team Netherlands in the second set. All right, well, by my calculations, and certainly I'm no accountant, and I wouldn't do the tax returns. That, I made that 59 games for Croatia, 160 loss, and 58 for Team Netherlands with 60 loss. And if they ended up on equal number of sets, um, at the moment, that would maybe make Norway actually the favourites because they've got a positive games one loss ratio. Yeah, I wonder if Team Norway are actually watching and if they are, I'm pretty sure that they're on top of all the numbers. Well, what they want to happen right now is they want, they'll be pretty keen for Croatia to maybe even hold this next service game, wouldn't matter too much, and then at least get Team Netherlands to serve it out. Team Norway, if you're uh, watching out there at the moment, you're certainly not out of it, that's for sure. It's going to depend, obviously, on what happens uh, in this second set, potentially the, the match tiebreaker, but they, Norway have a positive games one to lost ratio, whereas at the moment, Time. both Croatia and the Netherlands have negative games one and lost. That will change a little bit, but maybe not significantly enough. Donovekic needs a high percentage of first serves here. Love 15. Simple and sweet from Schurz. Yeah, and uh, Donovic, you can't just keep on going cross court two, three times, of course. The net player is going to go. Oh, Demi Schurz is on fire. Did you see that? She was taking the pace off uh, the surf of Donovic. And just ripped it down the line. Short take back. Right on the line, on the back of the court. Well played. Oh. Ooh. Got string on it. 15-13. 
an absolutely legit legitimate shot there from Doddy. She overserved the forehand. Does she change it up? Does she go a little bit out wide here? Great stretch from Donnie. Don't you? Yeah, great uh, move, gutsy move from him on the second serve of uh, Donna Vekic to cross. Look how quickly he's moved. Just finished celebrating his 39th birthday a minute ago. He's basically missed his birthday celebrations. From Donna Vekic, those lobs. Once again, can't get involved in too many cross court rallies from the baseline. Everything in Group F is on an absolute knife edge right now. Every point as valuable as the last. Set point, game point. But a magnificent serve. And the recovery still in play for Team Croatia in this second set. Yeah, they're really hanging in there. It's great to see Being down uh, five love. That's huge. Three <laughs> more games on the trot. Oh, there's, no, there's no way these guys know. I'm telling you, they're, they're just they're playing and they're just backing themselves to win the breaker. But I think those three games could be the difference. Well, I tell you what, if you're Norway sitting at home yep. watching this right now, you are hoping that Kulov serves this out. They do not want Croatia picking up any more games. 15. Well, it's likely that he will. He hasn't dropped serve on match. I'm just not sure if I have to do the on-court interview, which side I go to. You better be right up there, Mark Petchy. <laughs> it's a good job I don't have any reputation well. to lose. Let's serve. I've got Croatia at 60 games won, 60 games lost. I've got Netherlands at 58 won, 61 lost. And what have you got Norway at again? I'm 100% sure I've got Norway right. <laughs> because that was done before the day got underway. So 66 games won, 63 lost. So they're in the pound seats. Yeah, they're looking good. If so, Netherlands yeah. could win this game and win the match tiebreaker, I make it that Norway would go through. OK. 40 lost. But if Croatia win the match tiebreak... They go through. They yeah. go through, for yeah. sure, yeah. And then Norway would still be in a very good position as runner-up. Yeah, as the next best. That Game is sublime. 
team what in the a Netherlands. Sumptuous way to win the second set Six from Wesley Kulov. And, and all to play for and as we just go past midnight in Sydney. Yeah, it's amazing how they bounced back in that uh, second set. They really didn't worry too much about losing that first one, which was such a battle. And uh, to me, they were just a more creative team in the second set. So it's all going to come down to a match tiebreaker. And we've seen so many here in Sydney this week. Let's have a look at uh, some of the numbers. Uh, the first serve percentage has dropped from Croatia. That's really up high with uh, Team Netherlands, especially when the first serve is in, then uh, most likely they win the point. Five aces, also less unforced errors, more winners, at least from the, the forehand side. They were more creative and uh, they were just uh, doing a little bit more at the net, even Dodik losing his uh, serve in the second game of the second set, that didn't help. So the momentum changed. We talk so much about it in uh, doubles and in mixed doubles that it happens so quickly. So good feel here from uh, Kohlhoff. Uh, and it's all coming down on this match tiebreaker in the third set. I can't wait for it to start. There's a lot to play for, for both teams. Greaseball there is uh, co-captain, Wesley uh, Kulov, the team captain, and also the captain of this uh, doubles pairing. But uh, Demi Schurz has done a wonderful job. But uh, I wonder whether uh, Greaseball has been also trying to do the uh, mathematics. Scott Burns, fitness trainer of Wesley Kulov uh, at the back there. There's some great tennis, not just left for tonight, but tomorrow, of course. We've got, uh, we've got the Italians and the French here in Sydney, then the Greeks and the Canadians, they'll be here. I'm not sure I'll be here if I've got this wrong, though. <laughs> <laughs> if, I, if I've made a monumental mathematical mistake... You don't I make mistakes. I might well be on my way to, uh, to Cape Town and rejoin my wife for a holiday. <laughs> How do you think I feel? <laughs> I'm very tight. Josh, you can always refer to <laughs> patch set. <laughs> well, we're going to walk out there. Oh, my goodness. Time. It's very, very close. Yeah, and the graphics up on our screen here, uh, Josh, and you can see everybody at home just how close it is. And obviously, we're at that stage of it right now where there's a there should be another line there, which is games won and lost, which is what we've, we've gone right down into the reeds trying to work out for you at home what is going to happen. The clear-cut outcome at the moment is, in my opinion, Croatia win this. They are definitely through. If Netherlands Final win this... I believe Team Norway go through. And then who would go through as the next best? <laughs> I didn't like the silence from either of you two there. That did not fill me with any confidence whatsoever. OK. All Here right. we go. Dodic to get us underway. Vekic has to know she is the target on that second serve. Was Kulov is going to go down the line? You've got to be very alert out there now, all of them. Quick points going Team Netherlands team way. Netherlands. First up to 10 in this match tiebreaker. So uh, it's a long way that 2-0 uh, doesn't really mean anything. Well played. She's all Three over it. Demi Schurz at the net. 
What a strong start. We'll call Hoff and Schurz. Huge. It's just a single Three, point. One, two, but it means so one. much to Team Croatia to get on the board. At some point, we probably have to start counting the points as well. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> Go for it, Patch. <laughs> I already feel as though I'm on wafer thin ice. <laughs> Super serve. Just what we wanted. That could be a little advantage now that Demi Schuess is serving. Surely she's going to feel the pressure. Big difference. To serve at uh, a 3-2 or 4-1, for example. composure attached to that forehand. Yeah. She loves playing those Three big points. Right. Donna Vekic. We've seen it in the first set in the tiebreaker as well. But in the most important moment, she came up with uh, some tremendous shots. So was this one. Bravo. <laughs> What a brilliant evening's entertainment of the United Cup this has been. from Ivan Dorik. I don't know whether he paid a bit of a reputation tax there because Wesley Kulov has got some of the best hands out on tour and he knows that having played him. And he tried to do a little too much with the volley. on that overhead. I think he was a bit worried about taking out Donna on the way if he's gone <laughs> back. She hadn't Probably. really crouched down. But she usually gets out of the way. <laughs> you guys are way too relaxed up there. <laughs> Tight down here. <laughs> uh, we're not doing the interview, Josh. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> Great athleticism right there from Dottie. Makes up for that missed backhand volley. Detonated one on the line. Dynamite from Dodic. Really getting to the business end of uh, this match now. I'm a dog, do it. I'm 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 turn to serve. I'm 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 Precision applied. Mark, just just from your calculations, and it does look like the, you know the, the difference in the team bench. Uh, possibly the Netherlands look very flat. Maybe they they're aware that they might even if they win this, they can't go through. Oh, he 
got himself all out of position. Where's the cool off? He fell at one point there. Six five. There it is. The mini break. Would have been a lot easier to go for Ashures there for Donna Vekic, but she had a nice established position on balance. It was the right play from Vekic. And you could be right, Josh. a deflated Team Netherlands that trudge back to their team bench. Seven five, Team Croatia. Awesome. Awesome. And no. an effervescence from Team Croatia. They're awfully quiet over there, Team Netherlands on the bench. I think the tension got everyone now at this point. Once again, if you're just joining us, well, you've just got so engrossed in the entertainment and the drama out here. If Croatia win this match tiebreaker, they will advance. Very, very awkward. I'm not sure what happened. He took the eye off the ball. Even Dodik tried to cross, but not been the pace of uh, Demichur's forehand. Yeah, it was too quick. He ran into the ball. That's one thing which never happened to us, right? Being too fast, Petch. Again, very assured oh, by Schurz. So I'm starting to get a little bit nervous now, too. Seven all. Did the right thing here, Wesley. Just took a bit of time out of it and just got composure back. Eight seven to Netherlands. Of course, because Demi threw the ball up, there was no time violation for the shot clock. This swing isn't going to be significant for the Netherlands, but it's potentially going to be very significant for Croatia. Solid. Rock solid serve. Look for another one of those now. What a turnaround this is. 
and in keeping with the way that this tie has been going. If Netherlands win this point, Norway go through from Group F. Wait, please, wait, wait. Thanks. But on a percentage of games won and lost, I make it Netherlands would then be the second best in this group with Croatia last. And they would have a good chance to yes. potentially go yeah. through whoever, as the best runner-up. Whoever finishes second is a huge chance, you would imagine. Saves it. <laughs> he shows up at the right time, Ivan Doric. That was a great return, wasn't it? Right on the feet of Wesley Kolo. Nine oh. He's pumping the crowd up. Dorovic doesn't know where to look. the form book against Stodic on some big points to serve that forehand and that's exactly what Kulov did wasn't the outcome he was hoping for or Team Netherlands Croatia's future looked pretty fragile in the United Cup suddenly they breathed new life into the challenge thank you, thank you. please Got the return back, Donna Team Vekic, Netherlands. and then Aaron like that. That hurts so much. And she's the one who has to serve now. How will she handle the pressure? And is this a moment where even Doric should stay back? when you think you've seen it all. <laughs> My goodness. A let cord. Oh. Incredible. A couple of excellent reflex volleys. Donna Vekic with great movement. And that one has just clipped the net on the dotted forehand. Going down the line there on that Team first Team shot. Team he Team kept Team it together. Team. She's a big match player. And look at Ivan Doric. He's really getting the Croatian fans involved. Pandemonium down here, guys. Absolutely crazy. <laughs> Wesley Kulhoff, that was very cool indeed. <laughs> he was just meandering and just wandering around the net. And he happened to be in absolutely the right place at the right time. You know who's staying cool as well out there is Demi Schulz, that's for sure. 11 all. <laughs> Incredible feel, incredible hands, and how gutsy he is. 
seeing. Ivan Dori, he can't believe it. A little touch of the wand. <laughs> Incredible tennis we're seeing out there. Tennis at its absolute I'm, I'm, best. I'm Netherlands with match point again. <laughs> you couldn't write it. No one will believe you. 12. Well. Change of ends. <laughs> They've all kept a very cool those match points. That's for sure. Look at those kids behind you, Josh. Look at those kids over your left shoulder. I mean, talk about getting people involved in the sport and just having a great memory. Those kids are going to walk away from tonight absolutely loving this. They certainly will, uh, the whole crowd. It's been a, a great experience. The United Cup, it's been a success, hasn't it? And the format, the, the, the change in the format, it's brilliant. It is absolutely buzzing. What are they going to conjure up next? Oh. Well, the physical pain isn't going to be as bad as the mental one. Team Netherlands. Wouldn't you love to have a camera on Team Norway right now? It's a brave move there from Demishes and the right move. This could be it. Plus. Silence <laughs> signifying the magnitude of the moment. Talon can't even watch. Let's really <laughs> at thirteen twelve in the match tiebreaker. A couple of times let. Pause, please. That's not helping. Those rare times when you can almost hear the silence. There is so much meaning in this point. Blockbuster finish so much. to one of the great nights ever Team here in Netherlands. Australia. 6-7, six, 6-3, six, 14, 12. Quite unbelievable scenes in the Ken Rosewell Arena as Netherlands win the mixed doubles. 14-12 in the match tiebreaker. It means Norway will go through from Group F. Incredible uh, what's uh, just happened out there, and it just changed uh, the whole outcome of this group as well. They hung in there. Leslie Kohlhoff and Demi Schurz after losing the first set and being down a couple match points as well in the match tiebreaker. 
How frustrating this must be for Team Croatia. They're definitely out of the United Cup in 2024. Well, amongst the jubilation and the celebration and winning that will become apparent soon enough for Team Netherlands, the disappointment that they have not gone through and they can't go through as runners-up by one solitary game. Those three games, remember we were talking about it, those three games in the second set have cost them the ability to go through as runners-up. Croatia will be runners-up and they have a good chance of going through. What emotions, what a sport, what a night. Well, that was the moment of triumph, but there is an evening that is tinged with tragedy for Team Netherlands as well. Potentially could have at least given themselves the chance to go through as the best runners up. It isn't to be. Kasper Rude and co will be loving that outcome. <laughs> I wonder where they are now, Team Norway. They're actually realizing what's going on. Or if they only find out tomorrow morning. And this is going to be a nice interview for Josh Eagle. I don't know if he's going to have to break the news to them. Good luck, Josh. Thanks very much, guys. Uh, a, a bittersweet win in the end, really. What an incredible match from both you guys. It went the distance, but so many emotions, I'm sure, really going through your mind. Demi, first with you. Yeah, first of all, I'm happy with the win. Um, it was a very exciting match, especially at the end. It was very close to go uh, both ways. Um, but of course, we wanted to win in two sets, and we knew that before the match. So um, yeah, it's uh, it's what you just said, like uh, a lot of emotions. Wes, that was unbelievable tennis right in the end. That was huge, really clutch tennis. But were you being updated as the match went on, as the situation was unfolding? The games were just so close. So were you aware of that as the match was going on? <laughs> yeah, obviously. Um, yeah, we knew what we had to do. We had to win in straight sets to, uh, I think, to win the group. Um, yeah, it was a very tight, uh, tight first set. So, yeah, a bit of a bummer that we uh, that we lost that one. But um, in the end, we after the first set, we said, okay, we still have a chance to um, um, to be the best number two in case we win this set, um, like six love, six one or something. So um, yeah, we started pretty good. I think they were maybe a little bit down in the second because obviously they um, they needed one set. Um, yeah, and then second set was very good, and then, yeah, in the end, not sure what happened anymore, but uh, a lot of crazy points, and, um, yeah, let's see uh, what the outcome is in the end. With, uh, I think we have to count the games or something, but um, we might be on the wrong side of the, <laughs> of the score, I think. So, I think you're a little unlucky. You may have come down to one game, but that's what it's sounding like, so it's uh, incredibly close. I think they're doing a count back now, but just want to congratulate you guys. That was an unbelievable level of mixed doubles. Well done. Great win in the end. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, uh, ultimately, sport is about the result, and uh, it's one of those rare occasions for a tennis player where often it's just binary, you win or you lose, but tonight it wasn't about that. They won, but they still ultimately lost, and uh, well done, Josh Eagle, for that interview. That was not an easy one to, to have to go and break the sad news for them that they are, they're not through, and he was right, just by the one game, Barbara. I haven't seen, I haven't seen too much tennis that's ended like that. No. It's so dramatic. It's it's horrible. I mean, they're winning such a tight match. Normally, you should be upbeat. You know, you should be laughing, giving each other high fives. And uh, I mean, you could see the reaction of uh, Team Netherlands in the background there once they converted the match one. It was very, very quiet. They all knew, OK, they have missed their chance. And uh, yeah, that's how tough tennis is, especially with this format in the United Cup. But uh, still, what an incredible match we've seen. And it, and it does add, on occasions, um, some fabulous memories. I just wouldn't want it to be like that every week. No, I think uh, you, couldn't, you couldn't play every week if it's like that, right? You wouldn't uh, probably you would have a heart attack, for sure, <laughs> at some point. Uh, as we have a, a quick look at the, the match summary, there was really not much in between the two teams uh, a few points here and there especially in that match tiebreaker it was pure entertainment and that's uh, better than any movie i have to say because you don't know the outcome most of the movies you actually do know how they end so uh, dramatic for netherlands of course uh, and team croatia they still have a chance to go through
Well, it's been a it's been a lovely evening. It's been breathtaking. It's been beautiful, and of course, always with sport, it's been uh, brutal for the ones that came second place. As we just recap the results of the evening, there was Borna Chorich getting a much-needed win. He's only played his second match since the U.S. Open, and that was impressive, Barbara. Yeah, it certainly was. I mean, he's uh, a player, if he wouldn't be injured that often, you know, he would be so much higher up in the rankings. Uh, it was an important win and obviously has big goals in this uh, season coming up as well. So can take a lot of confidence out of that victory. Donna's had some good court time as well, looking to get some form and she's certainly got it. They'll be keen to get another couple of matches uh, if potentially they could go through as runners up. And then, of course, you don't need any reminder of what we've just witnessed there. That has been absolutely superb. Tomorrow, what we got for you early in the day, we got France and Italy. France got a uh, opening win. Italy are 0 for 1, so they are desperate to get a win. And then we could be doing some nice permutations uh, going through there as well. As you can see, Caroline Garcia taking on Paolini, who uh, did well to beat Kerber in the end. Having started to cramp, that could be tough. So to go up against the always entertaining Adrian Manorino. And then we flip through to tomorrow night, that opening men's singles. It would be uh, nice if both of those two turn up. That's obviously, the question. that is going to be the question, Barbara. Exactly. Stefano Tsitsipas obviously having some problems with his back. Felix Auger Aliasim with his uh, knee. We want to see those guys, so fingers crossed they're going to compete tomorrow. Zachary against Fernandez will be a joy to watch. Zachary was uh, immense today looking very good and then of course it may well come down to the mixed doubles there fernandez ojali seem on the card as are Sakari and Sitsipas, who came second best in their mixed doubles but that is going to be another wonderful evening session as well the greek fans are absolutely spectacular and the canadians with it all to play for they won their opening match and uh, they will be looking to try and book their place through into the next part of the united cup and that brings to a conclusion what has been a simply epic day here in Sydney at the Ken Rosewell Arena. It has had a little bit of everything. It had joy, finally, for Borna Choric. And ultimately, it is Team Norway this evening that celebrate the most as they move through from Group F. It's been great to have your company.